Welcome back to Sussex Farms for episode 2 with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's 10.27 in the morning. Let's get cracker lacking. We've got work to do. Episode 1 wasn't quite an episode 1 as you would kind of understand it. This is the episode where we get the ball rolling and we start working. My money has dropped. I, I was on 99,997 I think it was. Um, and in correcting my error yesterday because I leased a couple of things rather than bought them, I realised... I hadn't bought pallet forks, so I bought some pallet forks, that's why the money's a little bit lower. So we're starting just under 100,000, that's where I wanted to be. We are uh, Miss Silly Peas Farming Services, and at the moment we do haulage and trucking. Now as I said, I don't want people automatically going, oh he's just going to do what he did on Washo, he's just going to do fuel runs, he's just going to... That's not the case, I've already said I'm going to do one fuel run every four, probably five in-game days, so I'm not going to do that many fuel runs i'm going to try and make my money elsewhere and like i say show off what this map can do first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick up a, a transport contract and let's have a look now some people have messaged me and said the transport contracts pay out way too much i suppose that's just all relative isn't it whether you think they do or not i'm going to accept the sawmill one there is i've got, I've got another one up there but that's worth more i'm going to pick up other contracts farming contracts until i've got my own farm machinery and we've got our own farm up and running that one is active okay first thing i'm going to do before i do any of that though let's grab this now the great thing about this with the um fast lifter on here i've folded it away so when i hook up the pallet fork shouldn't get in the way of turning i hope once those landing wheels are up landing gears up so we're going to go and get some fuel i'm going to put fuel in have me just saying i'm not going to do fuel runs but i need fuel because i need to fill up vehicles when i need to um and i've had a few people also message me um, to ask me how you do certain things. So this Let's Play is going to be that kind of, I'm going to play, I'm going to build up my farm, buy a farm, get some machinery, see what we can do money-wise. Um, and then it's also going to be clearing up issues, problems, if people mess and say they can't get certain things to work or they're not sure how, then I'll just do that in an episode, just show you kind of bits and bobs. Um, I, I think I showed most stuff on my first videos, but obviously uh, some people skip bits because they don't like the sound of my voice or they have the volume down or I really don't know but if you're not sure about fuel where to get fuel from top of the map up here opposite sweet potato cell point and just before you get to the lime quarry which is just there and you can get free lime if you want it we have got the fuel depot and the fuel depot is just here now some people have also told me there are a few different tankers in game there's the man tgx tanker pack or something i think works here as well but if you want to be absolutely certain use the the tankers that are in game that jim's modded they are in the miscellaneous section but also if i come in here now and press l3 nothing is going to happen because if you want to take anything out of most of these buy points you have to turn on the pump so turn on the pump and now I should be able to load up. Um, so, click L3 now. I can do diesel exhaust fluid, which I don't want at the moment, or diesel. So, let's get some diesel. We'll whiz that back down to the yard. I don't think the tank takes that much. It's probably only 4,000 litres. I think that's what it was on Washo. Um, so, yeah, we'll see how we go. All good. No, I apologise yesterday when I did my, um, I just assumed, it's a very English thing to do, isn't it? I seem to spend my life apologising for things. Um, I, I kind of did that big thank you for hitting 40,000 subscribers, and I'm still, you know, still gobsmacked. Absolutely blown away. Um, 40,000, so we need to make that back, or some of it, anyway. Um, and I didn't thank everybody individually, you know, there were a couple of people I thanked, um, but there's a whole list of people... Um, who I speak to regularly, who have helped me out on a regular basis. Um, you know who you are. And if you know who you are, you're one of those people. If you're sitting there with a smile on your face thinking, yep, that's me. Fantastic. You know, and there are people I speak to regularly. Um, there are people that I've done a few streams with. I've done a few multiplayer games with. And I don't normally do multiplayer gaming. But when I get to know people, and it takes a while, you know, I'd, I'd chat with them and, you know, whoa, what a wobble on there, what happened there? Um, I, I have to kind of get to know a person and feel for who they are and before I would even contemplate doing anything like that. And I have done a few. And again, if you're one of those people that I've done stuff with, thank you so much. You're amazing guys. 
you know, one that I really do want to, you know, and I feel bad because I don't want to... I mean, there's Farmer Min, there's Farmer Buttons, Farmer Pierce, um, DJ Gohan. Massive, massive, massive shout out to DJ Gohan. The man is a legend. I just, you know, I love what he does. Virtual Farmer, who I'm doing FSL with. Um, kind of a big pop of C and Adrian and, I mean, the list goes on and on. The Ways, the Womble Ways, I mean, oh man, you can't... Hello, Ali. By the way, hello. Um, so, let's overload diesel, see how much we can get in here. I think it's only 4,000 litres. Oh no. Uh, that was an unusual amount. Okay. So, that's where you put your fuel in at the workshop. Um, now, what I do need to check at some point is when the fuel starts to run down on one of my vehicles, I'm going to go to the petrol station, because a lot of people have said they've gone to the petrol station and can't get any fuel, um, which is odd. I don't know why that would be. Um, so, yeah, once you put your fuel on the outside, when you want to fill up your vehicles, you come in here, and you can fill up from this point here from the fuel pump, which is fantastic. However, there are people that have said, we've got big vehicles, harvesters and stuff like that, and you can't fit them in that gap. That's a fair point, actually. I don't know if these have got collisions on, so whether you could still... I'm sure you can probably still back one in. Hmm, can you get it right into that corner? I don't know, that'd be a bit of a test. Um, so potentially it might mean placing a placeable fuel tank. Maybe. Um, but anyway, so the rest of this then we're going to sell. We'll get rid of. We will take it to the petrol station. We could go up to the airport, we could go down to the docks there are a few places we can sell diesel now again you may be new to farming simulator this may all be a whole new experience to you if at any point you're in any doubt or you're not sure same thing is that you're in any doubt or you're not sure <coughs> excuse me where to sell things um, and you don't want to, have to go back and watch my first look or anything like that now this is good actually I, I missed this well I say missed it I drove straight past it the little transit van there's broken down and I think Actually, let's check it out. So I'm going to do a loop round. Um, does mean we're going to go and turn around somewhere. I think it's trying to the engine's trying to turn over. They're trying to start it. Let's jump out there. Yeah. Oh my, Jim is amazing. That is so, where have you ever come across that on a map? That's just, I love that. Oh dear, absolutely brilliant. Right, uh, now, obviously at the moment I've got hedge collisions on. And you can turn hedge collisions off. If you go to the garden centre, the shed behind the garden centre, you go into the shed, left hand corner, the thing comes up, you press it, I think circle, and you hear a chainsaw sound and it turns hedge collisions off. But we have an Easter egg coming up in this episode. If you don't know what an Easter egg is, um, it occurs on certain games, certain styles of game. It's basically just a secret, a little thing hidden away. Uh, by the creator of whatever it is and people do spend I know my, my friend uh, Mr. Dalit JD on Call of Duty on zombies and stuff like that there are so many easter eggs they throw into those games things you have to find that aren't obvious um, but there is an easter egg that uh, Jim alluded to and I think I mentioned um, that he'd said anyway you, you'll see later on that's what we're going to do let's go and sell this then we'll do the transport job but I did mention in episode one that Jim sent a message him, which I did while I was doing episode one. Um, and the message came back, and I'll be honest, I made an absolute gaff of it because it's, you know, me being me. So, we sell diesel here. And hopefully we'll go back above our 100,000 we started with. Hopefully. What I do need to buy, I think one of my first purchases is going to be a trailer, like a normal trailer for transporting crops and stuff like that. Then obviously at some point we're going to need to get um, a tractor would be a good idea, wouldn't it? If we're actually going to do farming, <laughs> we could probably do with a tractor. And then comes my massive dilemma. Other than um, 
other than having a farm where you start off with a load of equipment and kind of some of the decisions made for you yeah well, I'm not sure actually whether or not you can here I don't don't think this is a a buy point with triggers anymore is it let's disconnect that if I go next to the pump and press L3 if it does take any fuel at all Oh, that's interesting. So it really is only at the fuel trigger. Yeah, so that's obviously why if you need fuel, you have to place a fuel point and then fill it up yourself or one that you buy, because there are a few different petrol pump um, placeables and stuff these days knocking about in the mod hub. Um, that's going to be a big difference between this Let's Play and my Geiselsberg. My Geiselsberg Let's Play subscriber contracts is kind of a Let's Play role play. I don't often talk about just the game in general, I don't often talk about the mod hub and things like that because I'm trying to do it more like a let's play, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm farming, I'm doing jobs, I'm working on a farm for somebody else and it's all about the day to day and what we're doing and the contracts, so I don't kind of generally do just do the chit chat and I think it's one of the reasons why people don't necessarily enjoy those let's plays as much. I'm going to hold back here because the drivers for Syllogy Bakery and Maniacs, there you go. Oh, there's another one coming. That got a busy old company, isn't it? But yes, yeah, so I, I think this is going to be. You know, I, I can just talk more about the game in general, things that are happening. You know, which I could do on the other one, but anyway, that said. So, Jim's message to me. Um, now, if you remember back on FS17, and I didn't. Well, like I kind of did. Jim messaged and said he had a message from um, old man Leonard. And I did subscriber contracts on Sussex Farm on FS17. And Old Man Leonard... I had a few, two or three contracts, I think, for Old Man Leonard. And one of the contracts was that he wanted me to do a load of lumber and buy, uh, buy build him a log cabin. Which I happily did. The problem was, when Jim messaged me, I could not, for the life of me, remember where I'd built it. I honestly couldn't remember. Um, and the message was um, that he's in a retirement home and asked could I pop up and check to make sure that he'd locked his shed. Um, so I said, Jim, absolutely no problem at all. Although, I'm sorry, but I've drawn a blank. I, I honestly, and I suppose, again, because of the amount of maps I've done since F FS17, since I did Sussex Farm, the amount of subscriber contracts, mod reviews, map tours, um, and everything kind of ends up merging a little bit. I couldn't, for the life of me, remember. I, I just couldn't work out in my head where it was. So Jim messaged me back um, and said, where? Whereabouts old man Leonard's? Um, and as soon as he said in the message, I remembered. So, and this is no word of a lie, Jim, if you're watching, I haven't been up and looked. He told me where it was, so I thought, because I wanted to do it, and he wanted my reaction, he wanted my honest reaction, um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to whiz up to Old Man Leonard, we're going to check and make sure his um, shed is locked. Jim kind of told me what was up there, but I, like I say, I haven't been up to actually look, but I kind of do know. That's why I've mentioned something already. So, uh, I'm trying to think best way of going now. Let's check on the old map, shall we? I've still got that transport job I need to do. We are here at the workshop. Uh, right, all the way around. Past Plumpton, round the back road. Okie dokie. So, I'm going to take the trailer because once we're done up there... Actually, I don't know if this is going to get up there that well. Ah, oh, we should be alright. Uh, once we've done up there, we'll, um, we'll get on with this transport job. Get our first job under our belt. And then... Uh, I think we'll do some farming contracts if we get time in this one if not in the next episode so we're going to go this way and we're going to bang a left just here now old man leonard when he retired uh, wanted to have a cabin overlooking, if I remember correctly now, overlooking 
where he used to work. I think that was it. Which was sweet potato. So, I might have still even come the wrong way. I have, haven't I? Uh, can I get past the end of here? Maybe. Actually, you know what? One thing that Jim did say to me when he sent me the video um, of the kind of drive around and things that... I mean, I messaged him and said, I don't want to miss anything on the first look. Th these were the things Jim said, you must get these in. Like I say, it makes him sound pretentious. He wasn't a, like, you know, I want you to make sure you fit these in. I actually said, can you please send me a list of stuff because I don't want to miss anything. Um, and he said he just likes to, when he was making this, just get in a tractor, his favourite tractor, and um, and just drive around the lanes and the roads and the stuff around the back of Plumpton. And so that's what I thought, no, I've got to do this properly. So this road, is this road new? I'm pretty sure it was. Cause the road kind of went round, yeah, up to, no it's not. It goes round up to these fields, doesn't it? We're going to carry on this way. Pay close attention to what we're driving along. Whoa, what happened there? It's like aquaplaning over a puddle. Lost grip completely. Saying that, blimey. Yesterday, came home from... Um, I was up in the Lake District with my wife for a few days. We went up there because they had um, the market up in Keswick. Um, not the Christmas market, but all the Christmas decorations were up in Keswick High Street. And we thought we'd go up for a couple of days, take farm dog... Um, well, on the way back yesterday, the weather was horrific. I mean, torrential rain. We were on the motorway, heading back, not far from home at that point. Um, and this Mini came up my outside um, on the motorway. And just as she passed us, um, she aquaplaned on water in the outside lane. I'm going to stop there a second because I'm going to drive and explain this as well. She aquaplaned and her Mini, from the outside lane, spun no word of a light she span in front of the car in front of me she went sideways just missed the car in front of me by the time she passed the car in front of me she was facing us the car had spun round already 180 degrees she carried on past our lane into the next lane over and there was a lorry next to me she went across in front of the lorry between the lorry and the car in front of him and carried on turning so by the time she passed the lorry she was then side on again next to us we were all moving at you know 65 70 mile an hour it was pouring with rain no one was going particularly fast and then disappeared out of view down the side of the lorry as we all carried on moving forward i don't know what happened to that poor woman i don't know if she hit the barriers at the side i don't know if she hit a vehicle it was the spray and the rain everyone kind of slowed down my heart was going like you wouldn't believe it was terrifying i've never seen anything like it um, I hope she's all right. I don't. I don't. I don't know who she is, and I don't know where she is. But oh man, it's one of those things you can't unsee as well. Just doing that slide then just suddenly reminded me. Unbelievable. So up here, <laughs> old man then a retirement. See when I. Oh man. This is why I love Jim. I did it as a contract. I did it as a subscriber's contract. And this hillside had nothing on it. I didn't even I didn't put a road in or anything like that. I came up the hill. Um, I had to deliver a load of lumber. So I ch chopped down trees, did all the stuff. And, and I placed a placeable log cabin up here. And I think like a little barbecue hut next to it was what I, I kind of placed up here. Um, <laughs> that's incredible. I mean, I know that's not it, that's just the sign. But there's even a little road. Because I came up thinking, where exactly did I place it? I don't even have to worry about where exactly I placed it. Jim's kind of... I laid it all on. No way. Jim, man, I cannot thank you enough. Oh man, it sounds really ridiculous. I'm welling up. I know it sounds absolutely mad. I just... That's for all intents and purposes. That's the log cabin I placed. But that's... I don't know. I didn't have the chimney and the smoke. And the little barbecue hut. He's put it exactly where I had it. Overlooking Sweet Potato Factory. 
I mean, it's... <sighs> what? He is such a generous and kind-hearted man. Man. But well, this is the shed, and I've got a check. Oh, what? To make sure it's locked. And it's not. <laughs> now I know what's coming in this bit. I say I haven't been up here, I haven't seen it. And this is the Easter egg. So, remember the journey in. If I come over to the here in the corner, press circle. chainsaw sound so what we'll do let's lock it up for him which is what we were up here to do I am absolutely staggered <laughs> blimey 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 it's like a Christmas present. <laughs> Jim, you are so cool. That's amazing. I didn't go into this much detail. I mean, to be fair, on FS17, we didn't have the landscaping tool, to be fair. Um, I couldn't have done... I literally just placed a couple of placeables, but he has gone a whole step further. That is brilliant. I suppose it's one of those things, unless you are um, one of those people that plays the game and you like to explore, and some people will do, they'll just drive down every road and they'll go around and have a look and they'll see what they can find. Realistically, would you come up here? There's no field up here. You might come up to look at the antenna. There's not necessarily a particular reason to come up here. Um, I did have a couple of people comment to say they had found this. And I had every intention of putting it in the video. I know when Jim initially said that there's a secret. And, you know, he, I think he was hoping I was going to find it on my own. And then he's messaged and said he would send me a message. I had every intention to do it on the Let's Play and not on the first look video. You notice anything different yet? Anything unusual? Anything missing? Oh, yeah. Up at Old Man Leonard's shack. In the back corner, it removes the hedges. They're all gone. So, if you're one of those people that like a nice open map, you don't want constrictions with hedges and things like that, you want to be able to landscape, you want to be able to, um, you know, drive larger vehicles around and that kind of thing, whiz up to Old Man Leonard's for the uh, Sussex Farm Easter Egg. You can turn off all of the hedges. They're all gone. And you can make it a much more open environment if that's what you want. Some people prefer the map as it is. They prefer it to be, you know, as nature intended, so to speak. Now, this also helps out with somebody who messaged me and said, what we are going to do is we're going to hit the greenhouses like a so-and-so. Um, we're going to do manure, even if we go and buy it, which I think we probably will do. We'll get a load of water. Um, and we're going to go around, I think, and we'll sort all the, the greenhouses out because that will make us an hourly income. Look how much how much more open it all is. It looks like a different map. How does he do it? You know, and then you've got the option for landscaping. Yeah, someone messaged me and said they were trying to put in a silo, I think it was, over at the main farm. And was there any way of removing the hedge between the main farmyard and the placeable area? I'm going to take a punt here. Whoa, that was a gamble. There could have been traffic coming. So we'll just be over here very, very quickly. We need to head to the sawmill anyway. And in answer to that question, yes, you can. So. Yep. So by removing hedges, you can then put in what you want to put in. You can landscape the bit in between, do whatever you want to do. And if you want to put your placeable down here, so you want to expand Sussex Farm out, absolutely go for it. Now the thing is, I'm torn at the moment. Because I've got, I mean, personally, I like them. I like the hedges in. That's just my own personal preference. Um, 
so I might I might whiz back up to old man Lennon's and I might I might put them back on and I might pop to the garden centre and just turn the collisions off because I just yeah but like I say if you prefer it open if you want it open and you know, I need to get this right we are going to the sawmill aren't we or are we delivering to the sawmill let's check our contracts I'm still yeah man transport items from the sawmill to the transport company now if you're stuck on this as well if you're ever unsure go onto the map um, and it will show you the sawmill so your pickup point will have a yellow dot where your pickup point is transport company is down the docks and the delivery point when you do a transport job will have a red dot so if you're never sh if you're unsure whereabouts you're taking or picking up from those two things should be on the map so you should be able to go from the yellow dot to the red dot and that will tell you where you're going so we are going to the sawmill oh man makes me feel even more guilty now for not remembering when Jim messaged me <laughs> I feel terrible right livestock market then the sawmill actually I could have gone cross country couldn't I but then we wouldn't get to do this drive so enjoying it I love being back on Sussex farm I waited so long for this to come out that's no I say that's no that's no slight on you Jim uh, the map needed to be right and it need you know, any map needs to be right the same with seasons and I'm still with people hassling me when seasons coming out it needs to be right people doesn't matter if it takes months it needs to be right because if they bought it out early and people say oh seasons is out then people be going it's rubbish it doesn't work so you, you can't you know, I totally understand from the modest perspective you can't win um, so yeah that was why I kind of mentioned before I was only running one let's play on Geiselsberg whereas I would normally run two because I knew this was coming. Jim had messaged me and said, you know, it's in testing. Then it came back from testing, it had failed, and Jim did a few little tweaks and then went back in again. Um, and I was kind of waiting because I wanted to do a Let's Play on here. And I could have done a Let's Play on Lone Oak when that came out, and I could have, you know, there are so many. Shamrock Valley, everyone's been waiting for since FS17, and it's a beautiful map. And I love, love, love the stuff that Oxygen David does. I mean, man. Um, but Sussex was one I wanted to do you know it's one of those kind of there's no rhyme or reason and again it kind of highlights the fact I'm not always I say always sometimes I do I'm not picking maps and things to do just because that's the in thing at the moment because everyone's doing it because it's new because you know whatever I'm doing this because this is the one I want to play on so there's my trailer if we open that out uh, this is going to be weird now because everything's back to front and I haven't used this before, so this is going to be trial and error beyond belief. But the beauty of using this, I think what we need as well, I know you often see them when people are doing deliveries and stuff like that, is, um... Why did that not pick up? Is that okay. okay. That's like worrying. Ah, uh, it's going from the other side. We won't do it from that side. Um... You get a lot of delivery trucks, lorries and things like that, that have a forklift truck um, on the back of the lorry. We need a trailer like that. A transport trailer that's got a built-in forklift, you know? So when you get there, you just take the forklift. I know you can do it with a low loader or something like that, but I just think that might be quite cool, right? This thing is brilliant. I love it. I haven't really used it since it came out. Now, obviously, it does mean that manually, when you get to the other end, you've got to... Um, quite load everything but that's the whole point of a transport job and that's what makes it worth the money is, you know, for doing it which I might just oh we should go why is that not coming out that's weird there we go it's better up a little bit. We've got to be very, very careful on the throttle here because I do not want to push this off the other side. Might work. Right, so 
Six pallets to load. I will do this because you don't want to watch me loading pallets, let's be honest. I mean, maybe you do, but... I'm not... I mean, I'm okay at it. But it's like anything on this game. You can do some things on some days and it all works perfectly. You do something then the next day and it's just an absolute disaster. Something you know you can do and you do well and you never normally have a problem doing it. All of a sudden it becomes an absolute nightmare and you can't get it to work. And there's never a rhyme or reason to it. It's the same with logging, bailing, stacking bales, loading bales, pallets. It can be perfect and then it's not. So, I'll see you in a minute. So, last pallet. Um... I'm going to also, what I always used to do, was kind of as I was doing stuff, explaining why I'm doing it, how I'm doing it, because like I say, there may be a load of people watching that I'm new to the game, new to the channel, um, I know it's going to be teaching granite to suck eggs for a lot of people, um, this is very really weird, I don't know if it's a combination of the trailer, the forks, that's better, but what you can do when you're loading, and this one, this trailer actually, the straps go a very peculiar way, they go lengthways, rather than widthways, which is unusual. So what I've done is, as I put the first one on of each one and pushed it over to this side, I uh, attach that strap, so you just undo it, do it back up again. And that does mean then that it holds it down, so that then when you put the next one on, you can push up against it and that one won't move, so you won't end up pushing them off the other side. Um, it just kind of works a little bit better. If you want to go for a little bit more kind of the realism, just undo that one. Put that pallet on, because it will go through the straps. Whatever you're putting on will go through the straps. Push it on until you get to that one and it won't go any further. You know it's on, you come back and put the other one on. Like I say, you know, if you're watching and you already know that, then fantastic. It's just for fear. There might be people that don't. So what we'll do, let's put that away. Head down to the transport company. Now, something I will say... Uh, again, about Jim's maps, and it's that thing of do it, don't do it, it's up to you, but you've got the choice to if you want to. If you're um, doing any of these jobs, these contracts, and I, I did it again, I had a few comments, and that's the whole point, I'm going to respond to feedback comments, you know, uh, I can't respond to all of them, I do try, but, you know, is that if you think the, the pricing's too high, because um, Jim is very generous when he does these maps, he always kind of makes sure that when you're doing contracts and stuff, you're not spending your entire life. If you do a transport job, it could pay quite well. They're quite lucrative. Selling fuel pays out very well. You're getting free water, which you can then sell and make in money. But some people find that a bit kind of, oh yeah, but you, you know, you're making too much in one go. You can still do the contracts. You can still do the transport contracts. You can still deliver fuel, water, air, all the things you, you can on this map. If you think the payments are too high, then do what I do when I'm adjusting my payments for subscriber contracts and stuff give some away give it to charity make yourself feel better do a nice thing so for this one i'm being paid twenty-eight thousand. not that i'm going to do it because i'm quite happy with the payment but if you think the payment's too much if you think you're being paid way too much for it um then you can always just go in lease a piece of equipment for half the cost or however much you think you're being overpaid by uh, then give the piece of equipment back and that money comes off your tool. So you can still do the job, but if you think the payment's too much and you don't want, you know, the full amount, um, it's kind of a way of just balancing the books back up again. It, you know, yes, I suppose Jim could go in, he could reset everything, but some people do like the fact that you're kind of an in, in, an in-between place on here, that you can do jobs and you, they're quite lucrative, you get paid very well for doing them, so you can build up your farm fairly quickly. Um, as opposed to knocking away, knocking away, knocking away, knocking away for hours and hours and hours and days and days and days, not really getting anywhere, he kind of makes it so you can make progress fairly rapidly. Um, as opposed to the other option, the other way, is you could just put in uh, government subsidy mods, cheat in a load of money, buy whatever you want. So this is kind of somewhere between the two, and that's why I, I like you do get that feeling of satisfaction that you're making progress at a nice rate, but you are doing it by actually doing jobs. You're doing contracts, you're doing something for it, rather than just cheating money in. I know some people, your purists, will still argue, but it's still cheating because you're being paid way over what you would do in real life. And I totally get that. And if, if honestly, like I say, if that's how you feel, and you don't like the, the, the amounts you're getting, do the job and then just give some back. Give it, to, give it away. Give it to the needy, give it to the poor. Christmas is coming up. 
you know whatever you know what i mean it's just along those lines anyway what we can do is cut across towards the dots because the hedges are gone now and we can cut across if we want to across the grass field i mean generally speaking i wouldn't normally but why not we'll go right past the biogas plant we get to the transport company and we'll unload i've lost it where are we past biogas which you can pick up for 20 grand if you don't own it which i think is an absolute result i suppose what we could do at some point maybe is invest in a forklift for the docks maybe like the docks forklift so if you're doing transport jobs like this you can load up one end yourself thank you um, and then unload here using the fork the dock forklift maybe that might be a way of doing it just i'm just thinking of ways of you know of tackling the thing you know so what we'll do we'll back up here this is the transport company shown by a red dot at the moment because this is where i'm unloading on the map it's showing as a red dot what i'll do is disconnect that we'll jump out open the doors And that's where you've got to put them. Now, if you haven't done transport jobs before, or you're uncertain, every single pallet needs to be on the floor. Because I know I've done them a few times where I use the, the bag lifting mod, and you can pick them up with um, the straps in like one big pile. Um, that might be the other option, because done like that, that, you might get away with that maybe on a wheel loader with an adapter. Just trying to think of the options. Um, but if you've got a pallet stacked on top of another pallet, the trigger doesn't recognise it. So they need to be all on the floor. So, I'm going to undo the first row of straps. He says, like so. Again, you don't need to see the the punishing thing that is me loading and unloading. I think the, problem, the only problem with using this, the fast lifter, on the back of the truck... Is because unlike on a vehicle where you can change driving positions, so you can turn around and all the controls kind of turn with you, it doesn't on this. So when you get into a bit of a panic or a flap and it's not going how you think, you default to your automatic position. So you go forwards or backwards, and because it's opposite, because you're now reversing, as I just did then. Um, and it's funny how you can be far more... F there's far more finesse, I find, doing it the way you're used to, and that's just habit, isn't it? drop these off it's our first job done first bit of money made i think with the money we're going to make from this and the hundred well the little bit 112 we didn't make 112 the little bit we made from selling the fuel we'll um we'll invest us we'll, we'll invest ourselves we'll invest in a trailer uh i've got i've got two trailers i mean like a trailer for crops that kind of thing so what we might do is just get one that we're going to use in the future depending on what tractor we've got and then we'll just get a dolly for it. Or we could just go straight for like a transport company size one and then we can use the truck when we've got yeah, that might be a better idea. No, you come up a bit and probably over a little bit as well. Yeah. So like I said, you don't know. Could be painful to oh man, seriously. Some like funny angle, that's what it is. Should be able to get them all into the trigger, hopefully. I'm careful. But like I say, there are quicker ways of doing this if you do use the bag lifter. Um, it is pretty good, has a pretty good spread on it, but you can put a few down at a time if you use that. If you haven't used it before, what I might do in one of the episodes, I'll pick up another transport job and we'll use it. Um, there we go, come on, come out there. Okay. Right.
Okay, last one. If you find the forks are a little bit whatever you're using, you can always just do that. And they should transport finish. So they normally disappear. Did say transport finished. Okay, so transport job. Let's collect on that. Completed. Total 24,000. I thought it said 28. Was I imagining things? Probably. Uh, collect. And they're gone. Fantastic. So we're up to 137,000. Like I say, what you can do, if you're at this point and you're looking thinking, no, that was too much, 24 grand, not happy with that, <coughs> I think it was only worth 10 grand, then absolutely fine, come in, I don't know, let's say large tractors, scroll across till we find a larger one, uh, leasing cost on that's a bit high, 15,000, 15, 14,892, that one's going to be 13872. Let's change up one. That's too much. <laughs> Isn't it funny how that happens? There we go. So, if I leased that vehicle for 14,025, that brings that contract I just did down to 10 grand. So I've been paid 10 grand for that. You may still think that's too much, in which case find something more expensive. So I could lease that, give it back, and then I've only made 10 grand on that, on that contract rather than 24, if you think 24 is too much. Um, so you can kind of just balance the books a little bit if you want to do that cook the books so to speak but I'm happy with it so I really don't mind um, what I'm going to do I'm going to take this back and drop it off and we're going to get ourselves a trailer um, but what I'm going to do we'll have a look in store actually let's have a look let's have a look at trailers I do have quite a few installed so it might take a while to scroll through these when I do my um, guide to videos my mod reviews generally I'll cut this bit out when I say they're in trailers and I do that and then I'll cut because the scroll through all the trailers I have takes a little bit of time and people don't want to sit watching me scrolling through trailers but for this we could still get a smaller one later down the line when we've got a tractor but I'm thinking we might as well if we've got the truck we'll go for a truck and trailer combo I'm thinking actually we're going for one of the Lizard BT 16s as a kind of standard tractor pulled one because it's quite cheap and it's new out I do like the Lizard Idea liner. to be honest with you 79,000 litre capacity it's a bit of a no brainer really it doesn't have a rear trailer hitch um, so you can combine that with other ones if you want to um, but I do like that I know I used it on Washo and it's a good trailer I mean I could spend my time looking for an, another trailer the one that Jim supplies actually yeah that's 60,000 litres isn't it Should we go for that? Obviously there's the semi-tipper, the Black Sheen Modding one, which is a 70,000 litre. I could go for that. But I'm thinking what fits the map? 60,000 litres as opposed to 79 though. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to go for that one. Actually... Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yep, yeah, going for that. To my usual adjustments. Main colour. Do I want to go Mr. Silly P green on this, or do I want to go with a kind of alternate colour that matches it? Could go for a slightly. I mean, that one's fairly like the Fent Classic, which is like Mr. Silly P green. It's a little bit more muted. I think that'll go. Because the cab's not a full-on, uh, you know, Mississippi green. Yeah, let's go with that. Now, that's a big chunk of our money gone. And that was the point of doing the, the contracts. Oh, I didn't change anything else, did I? Spare wheel reflectors, stuff like that. And I didn't change the cover. Oh, it doesn't matter. It'll be fine. It's all good. So, we're going to head off and we're going to collect our new purchase. I'll drop this off back at the yard. We'll go and get a new purchase. We'll think about next jobs, next contracts. 
I think the next thing we need to start saving for is going to be a tractor. Probably some land of our own. Uh, we are going to need a tractor. I suppose we're going to need the land before the tractor. Um, oh, greenhouses, wasn't it? Yes, I think what we'll do next episode, we're going to hit the greenhouses. So we'll use the trailer we've just bought. We'll buy a load of manure. We'll use the tanker. We'll go and get a load of water. We'll go around. We'll fill up the greenhouses. We'll make sure they're all good to go and producing the various different things that are on the map. So we'll have tomatoes on the go, there'll be mushrooms on the go, there'll be lemons on the go. Um, yeah, that's I think that's what we're going to do. That'll be our next step. Then we'll pick up some farming contracts, I think. We'll do a bit, a bit like that. And if we can pick up bits of equipment of our own, it does mean then that the farming contracts we pick up, the in-game contracts, um, we'll make more on them if we're using our own equipment. And so we can kind of build up our farm equipment, but we do need to buy the farm because I'm going to run out of room at the workshop to store everything. So we are going to need either a bit of land or yeah, we'll sort something out. Rude. Right, we are up at the store to collect our new trailer. Um, I started playing Farmer's Dynasty yesterday. Um, a few people asked me, was I going to buy it, was I going to play it, was I going to do any videos on it? Um, so I'm going to put this out there right now. Uh, I have bought it, I am going to play it, because I'm curious and I want to have a go and I do like farming games. However, actually that green goes nicely with that. I think the other one would have been too garish, wouldn't it? Although, ah, that, oh no, that does not like that, does it? I probably need the longer conversion on that, don't I? Oh, that's annoying. I need the, the uh, slightly longer, the double axle rather than the fast lifter. Oh, I don't really want to give that back, I wanted to use it. Anyway, yeah, so, um, yeah, I've been playing it, and I, I like it, it's nice, it's a good game, um, but the problem I've got is, I say problem, um, because I'm doing the Farmer Simulator League with Giants, um, I'm kind of tied in with Giants, and part of that, that kind of deal, as it were, is that, as the face of Farmer Simulator League, or one of the faces of Farmer Simulator League, or voices of Farmer Simulator League, um, I'm not allowed to put out videos of other farming games, um, at the moment so much as I'm playing it and I may like it not like it however whatever my feelings are on it um, I can't put videos up on it um, so that's just kind of the way it's but I'm playing it I'm you know and I'm quite enjoying it actually I think if you've got even slightly OCD in your nature if you get that kind of compulsion to keep doing something it's one of those games that I think you would find yeah anyway but on this bombshell I need to decide what I'm going to do about this trailer. Um, but we have come to the end of this episode. So, episode number two, in the can. Um, next episode, to what I'm going to do with the trailer, we're going to whiz down from here to the livestock market, we'll buy some manure, we'll go around the greenhouses do manure, we'll do some water, we'll look and see if we've got some contracts available for um, jobs, actual farming jobs, because we are farming services. We help all aspects of farming, whether it be delivery, distribution, um, whatever it might be, um, and farming, harvesting, all the, all the usual things, and um, we're going to try and work our way up then to either our first bit of land or a tractor or you know, whatever it might be next. That's kind of the plan. So uh, thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.